Hey there everyone, my name is David Awad, one of the wonderful developer evangelists here at R3 working on Corda, and today I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough and tutorial on how to get Corda set up on Azure. Let's get started. So I'm actually going to jump into the terminal for this one, and I've got my Azure demo up here. It's got two different folders that outline some Cord apps and that are going to run and some files for specific Corda nodes that are going to run on a one virtual machine and another virtual machine, as well as a commands.sh file that we're going to run on the actual nodes in Azure when we start. So to get this code, I've uploaded it onto GitHub right over here. You can find that really easily, and I will include the link in the description. So got these two different folders here, and we're going to touch those in a minute, but first we need to get our Azure nodes. So I'm actually going to pull up Azure here. I'm going to create a resource. I'm going to select Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS, and I'm going to hit Create. Now the Resource Manager should come up here, and we're going to need to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to specify a resource group. That's just going to be my David Azure Resources. That's nothing useful to us. I'm going to call it 1VM, just to be clear and the username is going to be Azure user and I'm going to use an existing public key you can do this however you want this just manages how your VM <coughs> how you get access to your VM now I can get access by just going and uh, copying my S uh, my <coughs> my SSH public key I'll put that in the clipboard and paste it in there Looks like that worked so then I will <coughs> allow selected ports we're actually going to use a custom network policy here if I go into the networking tab I've actually created a uh, advanced network security group and it's called David demo network security group and if you're wondering what that is I'll show you there we go now you can see here that this network security group allows all inbound and all outbound traffic. It's not the safest setup for production, but it'll work for our purposes. So I'm going to use this as the security group for both of our VMs here. And here we are. Again, so all we've done is copy over our own public key to make it easier for us to SSH to the machine. We've specified a network configuration and security group, and we're going to create the VM. All right then. Now I have two VMs that are configured exactly the same way. This is one VM and 2VM, not the gr greatest names, but it'll work. And now each of these has a public IP address that you can see up here. This one's got a public IP, the other one's got one. And so here is where we actually have to make some changes to our code. Now if you look inside of the folder we downloaded, they, there are two different, <coughs> two different folders here, VM1 and VM2. So I'm gonna split my terminal and open both. I'm going to go into VM2 and then go into VM1. Now inside of both of these folders, we have a docker compose.yaml. It's worth taking a minute to look at that. You'll see inside of here, we've outlined a Corda node and image. Here's the notary and here's party A and the ports that those Docker containers are going to have available. On the other side of it, we've of course done the same thing on VM2 where we have party B and party C. Now this works exactly the way you'd expect. Now inside of here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to edit files inside of party B and party C in the node configurations. What we're going to do is I'm going to edit party A's node.conf and you'll see here that the peer-to-peer -peer address is actually specified explicitly. And so that's where we're going to put the IP for VM1 because these are the nodes that are going to run there. So then I'm going to do the same thing for party C and party B. There we go. I'm just going to grab the other IP address from here. It's the first one. And then here's the second one. And again, these are just the same IP address. We're keeping it simple. We're going to run 
both B and C on the same Azure node. And of course, if you wanted to get more creative with this, you could of course run each of these on a separate node and it would still work. So this is just for simplicity for the sake of our demo. Now we've copied over the correct IP address into uh, for VM2 into the nodes that are supposed to run on VM2. We've done the same thing for the nodes that are going to run on VM1. Those all have the IP address for VM1. Now we've done that, now I can go and actually abstract out a little bit. I'm going to copy this whole folder using the Azure user that we have. I'm going to copy it into the home folder for VM1. Now hopefully that works using my public key, we will see. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my other one, with VM2. Now hopefully through the magic of editing, we will have both of them pretty quick. Awesome. So all of the files have copied over. So to SSH onto these machines, we're just going to SSH to the Azure user at these IPs. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here with the first one. And I've got a prompt and I'm going to do the same thing here for the second one. So inside of these VMs is just the Azure demo folder. So I'm going to go into that and I'm going to actually run this commands.sh file. Now, just if you're curious to see what's inside here, because this might be a while, you can actually look inside of commands.sh. It does some basic things. It does an update. It installs some packages and it configures Docker for the machine and it also double checks some permission things we might run into when we first run our Docker containers. And there we go. Skipped ahead so you didn't have to see all that. Now, once we're at this point, all we have to do is just get ourselves ready to roll with the actual containers. So I'm going to go into the VM1 folder on VM1 and I'm going to go into the VM2 folder on VM2. So I'm going to run docker compose up while passing the specific file that I want to use. So in this case that's docker compose vm1.yaml and I'm going to do the same thing here with docker compose vm2.yaml. Now you'll see these download all of the corresponding docker images that they need and then copying over all of the configuration information. Now, just a quick note, you may run into permission errors that look something like this when you're running this demo. Just try to double over this command here to change ownership of the directories. That pretty much is everything you need to do there. So just run that on the directories and that should solve your problem. And then jump back in there and try Docker Compose up one more time. And then hopefully you'll find something like this. And Corda will start logging and start telling you some information about where logs can be found. And it'll include some other RPC information that we're going to need to use. Specifically the RPC connection address. You're now probably wondering, I've got my Corda containers running. How do I actually connect to the network? So for that, I'm going to use the Corda Node Explorer. So I've got the Node Explorer filled in here with the IP address of VM1, the connection port, I've also got the RPC username and password. And if you're wondering, this information is all outlined inside of the specific node configuration files. So if I hit the connect button, it should connect to party A's Corda node, which shows up right here. And now you have all the power of the Node Explorer at your fingertips to trigger flows, create transactions, look at node information, and of course, the network. And so if you look here, you can see party A, the notary, party B, and party C. And that about does it. That's pretty much everything you need in order to be able to create and run a Corda network on Azure. And that about does it. I hope this video was helpful for you. Links to everything we talked about will be in the description right below the like button. And we want to thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please do feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn or Twitter. Reach me and the rest of the DevRel team on Slack. And of course, feel free to check out the quarter documentation and our new developer training. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Talk soon.